Welcome to our newest release of Beyond Distribution with GTDC. Today's guest is Philippe Jarre, CEO of Mindware, a Dubai-based distributor and newly announced member of the GTDC. In this episode of Beyond Distribution, Jar joins Frank Vitagliano to discuss the unique IT opportunities as well as the different business challenges vendors and providers face in the Middle East. From innovation and risk management to mitigating the cost of money, technology companies must be flexible and highly supportive to succeed in this rapidly advancing region of the globe. Get all the details in this episode and enjoy. Well, hello everybody. This is Frank Vitagliano and we're, this is our next edition of uh, Beyond Distribution. And I'm delighted today to have our newest uh, member of the GTDC, uh, Philippe Jarre, who's the CEO of Mindware, uh, a distributor in the Middle East. So Philippe, welcome. Uh, thank you, Frank, and I'm extremely happy to be a, a new member of GTDC, and thank you for having me today. So Yeah, so we're, we're happy to have you. We, um, you know, we know we've been talking for a while uh, with, you know, with you and your team. And we were delighted uh, at the last board meeting to um, get the formal approval. And uh, now you're a full-fledged member, and uh, we're excited about that. So welcome. <laughs> me too. Me too. Thank you. So, Philippe, uh, to get started, uh, if you would, let's can we talk a little bit about you know your professional journey, your background? Uh, I know you and I share one big thing in common. We both work for IBM. Uh, Absolutely. You know, which Absolutely. we discussed when we were together in Europe. Uh, so yeah. talk to us a little bit about, um, you know, your background and, and how you got where yeah. you are today. Yeah. So, so as you probably noticed, I'm French. Uh, I was born in, in, in the mountains in France and I was graduated as a, and as an engineer in France. Uh, then the, very quickly, I, I traveled across the world. I think I moved 28 times in my, in my career. Wow. Across the world, I lived in, uh, in Canada. I lived in the U.S. I lived in Ireland. I lived in the, in the, in Dublin, yes, in Belgium and, and, and in Dubai, and I worked almost everywhere in the world. Uh, as you said, I spent 25 years in IBM, a um, lot of different positions. I was a GM for IBM in France, GM for IBM outsourcing in Dublin, and for five years I was in New York, uh, the GM for the business continuity business. And I left this big company actually uh, almost 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I decided to come and, uh, and live in Dubai to become the, the CEO of a, a system integration company, uh, quite big in the Gulf region with what I would say 2,500 uh, people. Uh, but it was a very interesting uh, journey for me because I discovered uh, what it is to do business in the Gulf region. And, and I worked in China, I worked in South Africa, I worked in, in the US, in the UK, in Europe. But it's a different way of doing business, and it was extremely, extremely interesting. So I was very pleased, actually, to, to take this position. Uh, and then in 2019, um, I was asked to become the CEO of, uh, of Mindware, which is a distribution company. And, and to be frank with you, Frank, uh, I knew nothing about distribution. You know? yeah. I, was, I was a vendor before. I was a system integrator, but I did not know what it is to be to be in the middle, and I'm telling you, it's a, it's a fantastic journey for me because uh, you learn a lot being on both sides, and, and you can feel what is you know what are the the, the 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 KPIs of the vendor, the KPIs of the the system integrators, and you need to adapt yourself to really uh, bring value, uh, but to understand as well that you work on thin margins in our business. And therefore, you need to protect your company and, and be very flexible, but as well, very strong. And I always use this um, analogy of, you know, this business is really uh, like uh, when you are a, a pilot of a helicopter, you know, you have multi-dimension to manage and you need to be very careful not to crash. So, but it's a very fantastic journey. I'm very happy, uh, Frank, to be in this business. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny. Your background and my background are very similar because... I spent a long time at IBM, uh, actually thir thir more than 30 years. And then I yeah. uh, ended up running a system integrator for two years, uh, almost two years. And then I took this job, same thing. But what's interesting, with no distribution background, but what's interesting is you do have a more of a background than you think because you knew in terms of the supply chain and the go-to-market you know, process, 
how important distribution was to open Absolutely. IT, you know, yeah, yeah. you Absolutely. know, routes to market, right? So it becomes yeah. it 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 sort of becomes uh you're familiar kind of with it as a customer or as a partner, because I view the vendor community sort of as a partner, you know, with, with uh, us. No, of course, of yeah. course, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So your experience obviously is very extensive. Um, what's your view of, you know, doing business in the Middle East? Uh, because it clearly differs uh, from, you know, other parts of the, the world and certainly in, I think, probably very significant ways. So talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, so this is a region, it's not really different, but you have some major di differences, which are the first one, everything is based on a relationship. So for sure, this exists everywhere in the world as well. But here, it's even more important. So you really need to create an ecosystem uh, where you have a constant exchange and relationship with um, the ecosystem, with the vendors, with the partners, with the, the customers, uh, with the financial institution to ensure that you have this relationship and this relationship knows you and, and they know what you can provide and they, knew, they know you. And so you need to, you need to spend a lot of time you know, having dinner, having uh, coffees, uh, you know, just discussion without talking about business, talking about what's happening in life. And this is happening, of course, in many countries in the world, but it's even more important here. So I would say this is the first point. The second point is the governance model of these countries. Um, they are uh, extremely uh, very agile because they don't have the complexity of uh, what you could have have in France when you are, want to make a decision for a new investment in technology. And therefore, with the capabilities they have in being very agile, with the financial capabilities they have uh, coming from their natural resources, uh, they are able to transform the countries very quickly and, and decide on new projects extremely quickly. So, for example, when I came in 2019, uh, in Dubai, they decided to create a huge canal uh, beyond the, the major highway, which is uh, 12 lines, right? And they were able to, you know, in two, in two years to totally modify the highway. It would have been taken probably five, six, seven years in Europe okay, yeah. in order to do this. In the IT business, it's the same. And you can see that they have decided to invest heavily in a lot of new technologies in order to transform the countries. And it's, uh, it's interesting. And then the third thing I would say is that um, these countries are, are growing in terms of population at a rate which has nothing compared to the rest of the of the world. So I was looking at Saudi uh, and Saudi, there they were 7 million people, uh, I would say, uh, 50 years ago. Now they are going to be close to 40 million. Uh, UAE, they were 400,000 400, people uh, 50 years ago, we are 10 million now. And, and the growth is, is going to keep work, keep working, bringing new talent, bringing new people in the countries. And this is creating a momentum for the business. So that, that's fantastic for us, right? I'm, I'm seeing growth rate in these regions which are, that I've never seen anywhere else. Maybe in China, maybe in China, you have been able to see this, but I would say it's a very, very interesting market. Yeah. And, and, and people are very friendly, very friendly. To do business here is, is very nice. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, it's what you just described is a, is also a fun atmosphere to work in because it, it uh, is, it yeah, is. because, you know, I, I know from, you know, my days, there were times when we were working in a zero sum environment, whereas you weren't able to invest unless you divested somewhere else. And when you're in a marketplace that's growing like you're in and people are making investments, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> it, it is, be, it yeah. is. Yeah, that's and, and the complex the complexity of doing business is quite low, uh, and you don't have too much uh, constraints, so which helps think, to make things very quickly. You know, I was the GM for for IBM in France for three years, and what you just said was exactly this. You know, it's it's painful to have to lay off people in order to be able to reinvest, right? Yeah. I'm not I'm not saying it's not that easy here, but it's you know it's a different dimension, different dimension. 
Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. I've been on, I've been in both situations as, as you have, and and I'll take the, yeah. I'll take the one where we're investing <laughs> and having, you know, having a, a fun, a fun yeah. time do, doing it. So, yeah. what's interesting is, you know, obviously you have been around the industry for a long time. You understand it from a lot of perspectives, but being a a uh, a leader uh, of a distribution business is is obviously you know, a, a change for you. And it's kind of refreshing because you're coming in, in a lot of cases, without, you know, a long legacy background. Um, so you can view it, you know, differently. And when I've talked to a lot of folks who come into distribution from other areas, either, you know, a, a, an end user, if you will, or yeah. vendor, um, they kind of tend to see it a little bit differently. So what do you see in terms of, you know, the opportunities for distribution and the, and the types of things that are happening that you're driving uh, to, you know, to kind of move forward? Yeah, uh, it's a very interesting question, actually, Frank. Uh, actually, when I came in 2019, uh, the, the size of the company was much smaller, and we were extremely lucky because we were able to uh, to acquire um, the part of Arrow that uh, we wanted to divest in the region. And I immediately realized that our value proposition is around the people that you have in the company. Uh, as I said before, people make the difference. Mm -hmm. uh, and my background was really on services. And I said, we need to create a unit of very talented architects um, that will be able to support not the big partners, because the big partners, they have this, but the medium, eco medium ecosystem where they cannot afford to have uh, security talent, data and AI talent, cloud talents. Uh, in the ecosystem, and I created this unit of uh, senior engineers that I'm proposing to the market without the competition. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm using these capabilities for the, the partner they are using this, a and it makes the difference because uh, this is helping the ecosystem to grow in the digital transformation and all the new projects that you have in the region. And I recently actually signed many partnerships with universities in the region where we have students coming. We just finished this morning the third onboarding of, of students. And initially we had you know, four candidates, five candidates. Now we have 50 candidates wow. that want to join for two months and, and two of them joined recently. And my, my objective is to sign new partnership with, for example, the Sheikh Zayed University in Abu Dhabi, which is only dedicated on uh, AI mm. uh, and, and all this new technology. So what I'm really trying to do is to bring skills and capabilities to support the, the market and being a real extension of my vendors and, and uh, aggregating actually the capabilities. Yeah, that's, and that's, uh, let me tell you what that is so critical because you know for those of us that were in distribution early and you know going back to our joint background i started working with distributors back in the pc business right yeah and, for sure in the mid 80s and back then the distributors really were sort of a bank and a warehouse for us right that's what we yeah. needed we needed the financing yes. we needed the you know the warehousing capability and then of course everything else evolved from that. Uh, but what's happening now is with your background in services, it's really critical that the distributors figure out a way to begin offering services that are really go beyond just the basics. And when I was a solution provider, I saw that because I couldn't invest in every new practice. I, I couldn't do it. And yeah. But our customers sure. were asking us, what do you know about uh, IOT and what do you know about you know now AI and big data and to be able to rely on you know you guys to provide that uh, and also to have you be able to figure out how to monetize that is really important. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so monetization. My, my op only objective in terms of of cash is not to make profit on these resources. Uh, is to be able to get them uh, you know cost free. Okay, yeah. because they are expensive, yep. and I don't want to 
but I want to resell the, them without making money. Okay, this is helping me to get, I would say, in the business model better margins. And overall, I am I am uh, I'm happy with this. Okay, but I don't want to become a, a services company. I have seen some distributor trying to get into the service business in parallel, and then. I can realize you become a competitor of your partners and, and, and it's not a good idea. So I, I've decided not to do this. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. It, there's a fine line there. There's a very fine exactly. line. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I, yeah, I exactly. know exactly what you mean. And, and it's a balance. And to be honest, you know, if you talk to a lot of so-called in industry analysts uh, who want to yeah. tell you about, you know, the future of distribution and where it's going, They'll talk about that. And they'll say, well, at some point, the distributors are going to sort of, you know, take a bigger role with the end user. And I argue with them all the time and say that's the number one rule that you can't cross is is you cannot compete with your customer. Right. Yeah, I, I fully agree. And the business model is different. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 So um, obviously, Saudi Arabia, uh, or KSA is making major investments become the leading country in the hub yes. for the region taking over from that role from Dubai well, you you kind you kind of talked a little bit about it but but what are your thoughts here and and how does that you know impact you guys and what you're doing yeah so it, it, I, I would not say that uh, Saudi is trying to take over from Dubai okay right. yeah. I would say that Saudi looked at what Dubai did 10 years ago and is now in the journey trying to do the same. Mm. The, the size of the country and the cap, financial capabilities they have and the energy of uh, the leadership, want, they want to accelerate and create projects which are just phenomenal. And so you, you, you heard about uh, the NEOM project. Just the NEOM project is to create a city uh, that will be 150 kilometers long, uh, fully uh, sustainable and with a lot of uh, technologies, but the size of the city will be the equivalent of creating a country just like Belgium mm. in, in terms of volume, okay? So they will add 10 million potential people in this city and new businesses. Wow. And this acceleration will, will give the capabilities of uh, Saudi to, to move to out outside of only the oil business, just like Dubai did many, many years ago. Uh, and and when you look at the economy of uh, of the region, you have for sure you have UAE and you have uh, KSA, but you have the Qatar, you have the Kuwait, and they all work in competition but well together as well. So they copy very well their their initiative, and it's very good for us because we can replicate easily some project which has been done in some countries and export. Um, but clearly, the clearly KSA has always been you know. Uh, the dominant player in the region because of the size on them of people and uh, of the GDP. But, you know, the others are, are following and it's good for us. Huh? You, you could see all the cloud data center, which has been opened uh, by Google in Kuwait and in Qatar, Microsoft in, in Saudi, Oracle in Saudi. Uh, you have a lot of new projects on, on, on data and AI. You know, every, every government in the region wants to to build their own chat GPT, mm. okay? The, the investment are massive. Yeah. We are talking about 200, 300, 400 million dollars for each project. And, and so th this is something that's going to go fast. Uh, and for us, for sure, it's extremely important and for the for the vendor we're working with. Yeah. yeah. So in, in Europe, the rest of Europe and, and uh, uh, in North America, we obviously see a continued big push on, you know, cloud, uh, a big push on building platforms and marketplaces, which obviously require solid infrastructure. Um, you see the same trend in your Absolutely. region uh, as compared to, you know, Western Europe and North America? Yeah, absolutely. No, no, uh, it's exactly the same, you know, and, and because of uh, of the um, the data privacy issues, every country actually is building their own uh, data center cloud for public and private cloud. So the number of investment on data center, on infrastructure are, are, are just huge in the region, Inc incredibly. You know, and uh, that's good. That's good for the for the business. 
But you know, it, it, back to the discussion we, we had before, the financial part of the discussion now because of the, the, the cost of money in the region, which is, you know, the cost of money in the region is close to uh, to eight to nine percent, right? And and uh, the, then you have a you, you start thinking think, seeing a balance between should I buy a cloud solution, should I buy uh, hardware and, and finance it? Uh, and so things could change uh, because of actually of these financial de decision that are in, in the market, mm. uh, and uh, it's very interesting, very interesting. Yeah. When you look at the, you know, having done business all over the world extensively, when you look at the sort of the evolution of distribution and sort of where it's been, you know, from your perspective, not as a, not as the leader of a distribution company, but just as a, you know, yeah, yeah, part of a major part of, a, of the, an IT business, when you look at the evolution of that um, and where it's been and where it's going, how do you... How do you feel uh, about the the maybe the differences or the nuances in the region that you're in versus where you've seen it in other places? Hmm. Yeah, but you know, I, I'm a as part of my job and in, in terms of learning, I always look what what the big guys are doing. So the yeah. TD Sinex, Ingram, how everywhere in the world. And they are always, I would say, in advance compared to what the, the rest of the world is doing. So I'm trying to learn the, this concept of aggregation, and it has been presented by, by IDC recently, it is key, right? And, and it's key not only from the, for the technology perspective, but from the financial perspective as well. Uh, and, and you in it, and I think our, our goal is to be sure that we are absolutely well, in, in, in interlock with the financial ecosystem, including the fintech and all these companies, to be able to provide and re-engineer engineer a technology plus finance solution um, in the region that, that needs to be done. And, and it's something that I've been working on uh, a lot recently with my, my finance guy, because we were able to to be a clever and very agile. We're a small company, right? So, yeah. so I used to be in a a big American company and you need to follow uh, processes, we are able to make this happen quickly uh, while behaving in terms of ethical behavior, just like a big uh, American company. And we, we have no choice and we are extremely strong on this. But this is really something where I think we can make a difference. And I think the market should, should look at this uh, because uh, this combination is going to be critical for the future. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I totally agree. You know, one of the things that um, that I've observed over the years um, in in our industry and where we've been, which is I've always been on the ch you know the channel side, uh, either as a vendor or a system integrator, um, and to a large degree, I didn't speak to a lot of end users, <laughs> which you know if the end user didn't exist. You wouldn't need the OEM, the supplier. You wouldn't need the DISTI. You wouldn't need the, the system integrator, right? Um, yes. Uh, but you have, because in your background, you know, you were, I, and I know based on the businesses that you were running with IBM, that was primarily yeah. what you were doing. For sure. How exactly. does that experience sort of help you now doing what you're doing? Because there are times when you could get so focused on just the, the the upstream you know and the downstream piece of you know you're the, working with a vendor working with a, a solution provider your customers that you kind of forget about the end user how does that you know your experience help you you know in that in that in that uh, realm from an end user perspective what you always need to to look at the final value proposition and the final value proposition is about the design of the solution yep. the cost of the solution and the risk of deploying the solution. Uh, so each time I'm talking to a partner, I'm trying to cover these three points, you know, cost, design, and risk. Mm. Uh, and we are, we, and, and, and understand by DNA, you know, what my partner is facing in terms of issues because he needs to design his solution, but he needs to have the right level of, uh, of uh, margins in this deal. So it can help him maybe to negotiate better margin with the vendors. In terms of solution design, I can provide 
uh, and I created this, I created a, a solution hub here where the partner who don't have the skills can come and we help them to re-engineer the solution for the, for the end user to be sure that they will be more efficient and less risky. And at the end, we support them if needed from a financial perspective on the deal. I try to, I keep trying to meet some uh, some end users in you know a lot of uh, meetings and that. But and I try to ask them the question: What do you think about distribution? Most of them they don't know. They don't care. They don't care. Right. They don't care. And right. I try to explain what I do. I say, yes, it's interesting, Philip. Right. They don't care. So really, my my customers are my partners, and and everything I try to do is to support them. Uh, but thinking about you know the, the issues they are facing when they are meeting the end users, and uh, and I'm not saying life is easier here. Huh? It's uh, always competitive competition on pricing, competition on, uh, and, and the most difficult part for for this market is getting paid. Yeah, getting pay, paid on time, and and uh, this has nothing to do compared to the rest of the world. Uh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. You know the the end user piece that you you mentioned, I I, I grinned a little bit when you said that because I. I experienced the exact same thing. It's it's like you and I getting into our automobile and we turn the key and we don't care who, where, how the battery got there and where it came from. We can, <laughs> as long as it turns over and we can drive, that's all we care about. Uh, what I what I do think is important, um, and and I try to spend some time doing this is from a trend standpoint. You know, from a, what's going to happen in the marketplace and what are, what are end users thinking about and what's important to them. And you pick up a lot of that and you get a sense for, you know, what's driving them, what's happening in the board meetings and the questions that are being asked. Like for example, in every board meeting for a while, you know, six or seven years ago, everybody wanted to talk about, well, what are we doing with cloud? And, you know, yeah. whether they knew what was going on or not, it was a top, it was topical. It's the same with it's AI it's right now, right? It is, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, everybody wants to talk about that. So um, uh, we're kind of getting close to wrapping up. And um, what I wanted to kind of end with is obviously you mentioned the services uh, business and you've mentioned, you know, how your experience has helped put some things in place that uh, really make sense. What are some of the other things that, you know, you're looking at based on the trends that are happening in the marketplace and, you know, what you see in terms of, you know, beyond the basics of running the business, which clearly, you know, have to be done. What are some of the other focus areas that, that you have for, for Mindware? Uh, so please do not, uh, do not put the, the basic things uh, at the low level because they're ex extremely, extremely important. Yes. Okay. And yep. especially in the current market condition in the world, I can see the pressure from the vendors for, for the region to, to help our vendors to get uh, more business in the region on the basic, and we are trying to support them. Now, I think at the end of, of the day, uh, this is what I started to, with, is about people, right? Uh, and, and what I'm really trying to do is to uh, ensure that the level of skills and education that we have in the company is at a different level than what we had before. Uh, so we, we signed some partnership with uh, LinkedIn, we have a specific program with universities. I'm rotating a lot of uh, of my people. I'm really focused on moving them to a, a mindset which is not a, just a basic mindset of distributor, uh, and uh, and it has been working quite well. And, and the last point, which is key as part of the people, is um, the way they behave in terms of relationship. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, as I said at the beginning, in this region, everything is about relationship. Mm -hmm. and, and you need to ensure that in the in the curriculum of uh, the people I have in my company, you know, we have a good team spirit and and have a, an ecosystem team, good team spirit. So this is really one of the, the things I'm focused on all the time. Uh, and I'm telling you, we have, what, 42 nationalities in the company? Mm. Uh, wow. <laughs> different cultures, you know. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's really fun actually. It's really fun, and uh, and they are very happy to work here. So that's that's good. Yeah, that's great. That's great. And you know, um, I couldn't agree more with you on on the comment you made about the basics. Um, you know, for guys that have been in the industry for a long time, like you and I, we want to make sure that we're not viewed as quote unquote old school. And yeah. and you know, 
only talking about the basics, but what I usually, the way I kind of describe it is the basics that have been in place for distribution for the last 40 years are so critical and they're the foundation that exactly. it's all been built on. Exactly. On top of that, we do the other things that have to be done, right? And add exactly. services exactly. and add, you know, marketplaces and platforms. But if those basics didn't exist, it would it yeah. would be hard to 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 provide the value into the marketplace absolutely. that we provide. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely yeah. fine. That's great. Absolutely. Well, Philippe, this was great. I really appreciate you taking the time. And, and I know that the, the folks that listen uh, are going to be really interested. And, uh, and as I said at the beginning, we are delighted that you've joined GTDC. And I know that you'll be able to help uh, me, uh, you know, in terms of what are the things that we can do to continue to, you know, work on your behalf to make sure the marketplace understands, you know, what you do and most importantly, how important it is. Right. So we'll continue doing that. But thanks again for uh, for taking the time to join. No, thank you very much, Frank. It was a pleasure to, to see you and, and talk to you. And hopefully we'll be able to see you soon in uh, maybe in Dubai or in, in yeah. Saudi. Or... 